Hi, this is Dr. Nikki, and I want to talk about games and activities that promote fluency. And there are some things I want you to remember. First of all, they should be engaging. And that's where the dice come in. Dice, dominoes, a deck of cards, board games. All of those things are engaging. So here's some dice, and they're double dice. So the kids roll them, and they do a dice sort. So you, what you do is you take a piece of paper, and you write, we're looking for doubles. Let's say we're looking for doubles, doubles, plus one, other. You might just look for doubles and other, or you might look for doubles and doubles plus one and other, or you might look for doubles and doubles plus one and doubles plus two and other. You do the whole suite. So let's roll and see what we get. I got eight and three, that's other. I got eight and three again. I got three and three, so no, I got three and five. That's a doubles plus two. And I want the kids to tell me, oh, it's three and three plus two more. All right, I got eight plus six. That's another doubles plus two, or what some people call monkey in the middle. Right, we have consecutive numbers. Three consecutive numbers, the number in the middle doubled is going to be the sum of the two others. So eight plus six, I think six, seven, eight, seven doubled is 14, eight plus six is 14, or six plus six is 12, plus two more is 14. You want kids to talk out what they're doing. So dice sort is a fun game. Or you pull a card and you build it with Play-Doh. Who doesn't love that? It should be engaging is the point. You could do story mats. I love story mats. Who doesn't love story mats? What is there not to love about story mats? Kids love to tell stories. So you've got the story mat. You pull the card. It says four plus four. Now I'm gonna build it. I build four plus four. Oh, there were four fish. I lined them up and four more came. I lined them up. And now watch this. I want the language embedded. So the kids then have to say four plus four makes eight or four and four make eight or four and four is the same as eight or eight is the same as four and four, right? I want them to really play with saying those equations. I also want them to record. So there's a little recording sheet and it says, draw a picture of your story, write the equation, show it in the 10, 20 frame, and model it on the number line. So I'm going from the concrete to the pictorial to the abstract, right, where they're illustrating it and writing the numbers. So that whole cycle of engagement in one game. Notice how language is a piece. Concrete, pictorial, abstract, the language, tying it all together, showing those relationships. I've got this for the accountability piece. You always want an accountability piece. When we were playing Dice Sword, I had this for the accountability piece. You always want an accountability piece. You want it to be standards-based, so it's gonna tie into the standard, and the kids should know what the success criteria is and what the learning target is. The learning target is I can use doubles as an addition strategy but the success criteria is i can name a double i can you know define a double i can spot a double i can make a double i can model a double i can um tell a double word problem you, you have to put what they're supposed to be able to do when they're successful not only what they can do which is the learning target but what it looks like which is the success criteria so you want to make sure that you have that up in the activity or the workstation you want to make sure that it's rigorous so sometimes you ask the kids you know what's four plus four can you model that sometimes you show kids models and you say What's the question? Or you say, the answer was 12, it was a doubles fact. What was it, right? You have kids sorting. You have, you're asking higher levels of questions. So what is four plus four? It's like a level one. Convince me that four plus four is a doubles fact is a different kind of question because now kids have to provide evidence that that is a doubles fact and they have to tie into what is a doubles fact and why is this then a doubles fact? So you ask kids like, oh, the answer was eight. 
what was the story. So you're, you're asking open questions, remember, not only closed questions, right? So if I say the answer was eight, what was the question? I want kids to be able to tell me a story about that, which is a different level of rigor than if I just say, what is four plus four? And the point is that you, you play with all of those levels in your workstations and your um, activities. And if you don't consciously plan for it, you end up oftentimes defaulting only to the level one activities. So you wanna purposefully plan and intentionally plan to have different levels of rigor within um, your activities. Um, you want the game to be low stress. So everybody can sit down and play different games. Say you have a, a bunch of kids playing doubles, but some kids are kind of shaky. They can use the models. They can bring the wreck and wreck to the game. Say, I'm, I'm gonna have to figure this out. Whereas other kids might be doing it in their heads. If you want the game to be low stress and you want kids to want to play it and be engaged with it. So you're gonna scaffold access to the content. You want kids thinking out loud and using the vocabulary. So I always say in your workstations, use um, like this says sum and it says, and it shows what the sum is. This says add in and it shows what the add ins are. This says doubles and it shows doubles facts. This brings it all together. This says addition and it has everything labeled because when kids are playing the game, I want them using that vocabulary. I want them using sum and add end. I want them using plus sign. I want, I want them using the vocabulary in their workstation, in the guided math group, in whole group, at home. I send the vocabulary home. So parents, I'll say, your child's working on doubles. Here's a board game. Here is the, um, some flashcards, visual usually, flashcards to scaffold their understanding. And here's the vocabulary. Be sure that your child uses the words add in and sum. I want children using the words because math is a language and if you don't know the words, then you you can't speak it. So we have to integrate the use of the vocabulary into the activity in a way that kids actually use it. And we want them listening to each other and answering and asking questions. So you could put questions in the game as well for kids to ask each other. How do you know? Are you sure? Is that correct? Can you prove it? You don't have to give them a lot of questions. You might just say, when somebody says the answer, you say, can you prove it, right? Or are you sure? So you want to set up opportunities in the activity or the game so that kids are actually talking and listening about the mathematics that they're doing. And finally, you as the teacher need to be doing observations of those games. You need to be taking anecdotals of what you're noticing. You need to be meeting with your kids and conferring about where they are and where they need to go next. And you need to be doing some quick assessments of if they are actually getting the concept or what needs to happen to help them, um, you know, learn it more. So those are some things I want you to think about in terms of activity, engagement, accountability, rigor, that it's tied to the standard and kids know what they're doing, that it's scaffolded in a way that helps those who need the scaffolding. Remember, scaffolding is temporary. You use it while you're building it and then you take it down. On this site, there are so many games and so many activities. Keep those in mind as you're playing them.